This is the School Success Podcast, a podcast for school leaders to learn from other school leaders what's working and what's not, and to get inspiration and encouragement, as well as strategies to grow school enrollment, connect with families, retain teachers, recruit teachers, and everything in between. You guys are heroes, and I cannot thank you enough for pouring into this next generation that's coming behind us. My goal is you will take at least one thing away from every episode that you can take back to your school to make it better than it is right now. Please enjoy the School Success Podcast. Hey, School Success Makers, welcome to another edition of the School Success Podcast. I'm your host, Mitchell Slater. I'm joined by a new friend out of the Cleveland area, Mr. Matt LaFleur, who's got a couple different titles for him today. He is a partner of School Finance Help, as well as the VP of Development for Green Path CPA Solutions. And just picture this in your head, guys, all you school leaders, he is like the CFO that you as a school can outsource to to handle all of your financial stuff, which he'll dive into all of that here in just a little bit when he introduces himself. And I'm really excited for today's episode. But before we jump into all of that, I do want to highlight our amazing sponsors over at America's Christian Credit Union. This year, they're celebrating 65 years of service, and they provide essential school banking services and a tuition financing program for schools looking to reduce their risk and administrative burden. So if you're a Christian school listening to this, and you collect tuition as you most likely are doing, but at the end of the year, maybe you've only collected 95% or maybe 98% of what is owed to you. That is, of course, money on the table that is owed to you as a school. But America's Christian Credit Union has a solution for that. You can get have your families get a tuition financing loan through America's Christian Credit Union. And then you as a school get all the money up front at the beginning of the year. And the family just pays it off like a regular loan so that you aren't on the hook for any of that. And it doesn't cost your school anything to do that. So make sure you check them out online at americaschristiancu.com forward slash schools. That's americaschristiancu.com forward slash schools. All right. Well, as we jump into today's episode, I am going to pass it off to Matt to introduce himself. So Matt, welcome to the podcast, sir. Hey, Mitchell, thank you so much for having me. It's great to join you and the listeners today. I'm so glad to be here. It's going to be fun, man. And I know you just recently moved back to Ohio, but I know that's where you're from. But I always ask the same question as I begin. If I was to come visit you in your area, what would you say, Mitchell, you got to go do this and eat this? Is there something that stands out to you? Absolutely. You know, there's two things I would say you can't miss if you're coming to Cleveland. First is the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Memphis, I'm sorry, but Cleveland is the real birthplace of rock and roll. So you'd have to go to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in beautiful downtown Cleveland, right on the Lake Erie lakefront. That would be spectacular inside and outside that venue. And then the other thing that that attracts people from so far away, even other countries, is Cedar Point. You've got to jump on the best roller coasters or the best collection of roller coasters anywhere in the world just down east of Cleveland in Sandusky. Those are two highlights that would make for a great first trip to Cleveland. Man, all right. I've never been to Cleveland, so I'll put those on the list. I'll make sure because nobody ever tells me to go to a Cleveland Browns game. So I'm assuming that's not on the list. (laughs) Not yet. Not yet. Maybe. Maybe Deshaun Watson will bring him back. We'll, we will, we'll see. You need some of that Clemson magic to, to, to resurge. We'll see here. <laughs> <laughs> well, Matt, as we dive into today's episode, obviously, thank you for being on, of course. I uh, would love to dive into the, the financial world with you. I know that's your, your background. And so as we do that, I would love for you to first share your, your background of how you kind of got to where you are today and your expertise before we kind of dive into the main three questions I have for you. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I have the privilege now of just looking back over my life and my career and having a, a summative, you know, a global picture and see now how a lot of things have worked together that as I experienced them, I had no idea, you know, what the, what journey was taking shape. So I myself am a product of an independent school, graduated from an independent school, went on to university, studied business and accountancy. And then I began my career in the big four public accounting setting, though I knew that that wasn't going to be right for me in the long haul. There was this sense in me, this calling in me to be about missional and cause-based work. And so that led me, after I transitioned away from big four public accounting, that led me to my first school and nonprofit business operations position. 
And since then, I've grown over the last about 12 years in my career with increasing responsibilities for business infrastructure, business operations, and executive financial management for nonprofit organizations, uh, primarily independent schools. And so it's just been a joy to uh, give back and to pour into the organizations and the teams that are, are really investing so heavily in our next generations. And I love to do that. That's what excites me. That's, that's, that's what we're going to talk about here is just how we can empower and embolden and strengthen our school communities because they really are doing such crucial, crucial work in the lives of so many students and families. So i um, grateful for my experience and you know how it's led me to, to this point today. Love it, man. Well, finances are a huge part of obviously life in general, but of course, school health. And so jumping into that for like challenges. So obviously there are financial challenges for schools, but you've worked with schools. You've been a part of a school before. Are there some, some challenges that come to mind in the financial world that you've seen, but also, okay, yeah, you've seen that, but how have you encouraged or consulted schools to navigate those challenges? And do you have any tips on that, that thing of, in the area of challenges for schools? Yeah, absolutely. I think there are two two big challenges that I've experienced over over the last three to five years that have permeated uh, the school landscape. First is that we've seen, I think, an unprecedented demographic and geographic shift. There's been a de uh, demographic and geographic dispersion like we haven't seen before. This has been exacerbated by the pandemic, but we all know that in 07, 08, 09, birth rates were, were pretty low across the country, which nowadays has resulted in less primary school age students than before. The pandemic, you know, then entered the scene in 2020 and has moved families and has moved feet. And all of these dynamic changes, whether it's demographically or geographically, greatly impact schools and school communities as the constituency and the values represented in school communities change you know, school leaders um, have to have a pulse on that and be really proactive and really responsive to those those big shifts. I don't think that can be overstated. The other challenge that I see is more operational, more, maybe more tactical, and that's schools uh, oftentimes have difficulty creating and then sustaining a real efficient, modernized workforce. This could involve technolo technology for learning and technology for operations. And that's where a lot of my recent experience and the work that I'm investing in now can really come to bear to help schools think strategically about how are they, how are they leveraging everything that's at their, their, their disposal right now to have the best infrastructure for their school that results in the best learning outcomes, the most satisfied and fulfilled teaching workforce and, and the best you know, uh, support staff and parent community that kind of would come around learners and teachers. And so uh, that's what I get excited about is, is those technology, finance, infrastructural pieces that typically hide under the hood and that don't get noticed until it's too late. You know, I love to help schools address those things and get modern and strategic in wise and discerning ways unique to each school's needs and each school community's, you know, desires and goals. What are some of the ways that they can, they can combat those challenges then, or that you can help them combat some of those challenges that you you just mentioned? Yeah. You know, one of the encouraging things for schools over the past 10 or 20 years is that the proliferation of new tools, and new systems that can be leveraged for schools, for schools good, you know, things like uh, software systems that make managing finances easier, more efficient, and more accurate, uh, software and technology applications that make student management easier, that make fundraising and donation management easier. So in short, the answer is technology and the technological landscape has blossomed over the past 10 to 20 years so that now schools, even in single independently operated, independently led schools, they have access to a, a treasure trove of resources and they can employ those resources as, as best you know, deemed fit for their unique application and their unique community. But it's really leveraging those tools. It's, it's learning about those tools. 
and then strategically implementing them to advance the mission of the school and, and keep the ball moving forward instead of being stuck in, this is the way we've always done it. These tools won't let us do X, Y, Z. So it's really embracing, you know, the next iteration. That's what we've often said about our learners is that we, we iterate and we learn and we iterate again and continue that process to demonstrate our learning and to ultimately just grow. And that's what we want to do with organizations as well as allow them to grow and reduce inhibitors to growth and, and create frictionless, you know, business operations and sound infrastructure so that that growth can, can really be sustainable for the long term. So you'll come into a school then if they're having some challenges and, and maybe stuck back in the old days of like operating systems and softwares and be like, hey, you should use this this accounting software or this software for this to automate this. Like you kind of come and consult them in the all facets or just like the financial ones that touch the financial parts of the school and all of that. Yeah, both. I mean, we we understand what has happened in the marketplace with big data and with the proliferation of information. And so that's relevant for a lot of a lot of things in schools and a lot of systems, learning management systems, student database systems. Uh, but our expertise uh, and our uh, you know foremost uh, set of disciplines does pertain to the financial uh, management and risk mitigation uh, uh, disciplines that would be relevant in a school environment to really you know unleash um, fundraising uh, capacity to make gains in that development world and to free up business office resources and to make processes smooth and frictionless for families on the receiving end and also for employees and staff that work so hard in our local schools on the on the management end. Love it. Love it. Well, talking about the, the challenges, we obviously naturally want to go into what's going really good. Are there some cool wins you've seen with at schools you've you've worked with or helped that you've like, man, like this is going really good or here's a super cool software or a solution that I've seen schools implement that's gone really well for them. Hey, school success makers, just a really quick break to highlight one of our amazing sponsors, and that is ClassReach. Now, ClassReach supports schools of all sizes from application to graduation. Take charge of your school with ease, power, and mobility using ClassReach, the school management software administrators and teachers love using. You can get your free demo at ClassReach.com. That's ClassReach.com. They are amazing people, and they provide this amazing SIS software for you to keep track of your students' grades, communicating with families that are enrolled, and a whole bunch more. So again, check it all out on their website, ClassReach.com. They are awesome. All right, now back to the show. Yeah, you know, I didn't plan this, but I think the the wins and the encouragement that I've seen lately kind of dovetail off of those those notes about challenges that we currently see. I think there's more opportunity than there's ever been before for school leaders, for school influencers, for classroom teachers, for classroom support. And that's due to one, technology, big data, artificial intelligence, access that didn't exist three or five years ago even, to technology, to, to continuous internet connections, you know, all of these things come together and, and under that basket of technology give so many more tools. And I think those that have done well in schools are the ones that have seen, hey, there is a there is a creative way, there is a better way to do this. And maybe that means a small change or a large change, but we do see just so many things that can be used to improve learning outcomes and to meet the needs of students and faculty across you know, school communities in our country. The second thing is with those uh, demographic and geographic movements and shifts that I was talking about earlier, there, again, there is a freshness and a newness to that dynamism that school con constituencies have changed, learning formats and delivery systems have changed. And I think, uh, you know, COVID was a massive proponent of both the technology in the delivery side of education. And we're, we're just still in that cycle of deciphering what, what is gonna stick for the long term, what makes sense for the learners and the teachers in our, our school community, and, and maybe what doesn't. So I think the point is, as these shifts that are, are so, so sizable are happening around us, the schools that I've seen do well 
are adopting uh, technology for maybe for maybe hybrid learning, or maybe they're relieving uh, pressure and angst and friction in their business office by modernizing to to get rid of you know server based or desktop based applications. You know, or Mitchell, some schools are still doing record keeping on paper, on paper. And that just flies in the face of the dynamism that is is a hallmark of 2023, 2024, and the way our society and culture operates, works, learns, socializes. And so I've seen I've seen huge advancements in those schools where there's opportunities to think differently, think outside the box and where those leaders grab that opportunity and, and run with it as opposed to uh, continuing uh, to just do the same old, whether that's pedagogical strategy or business strategy. Man, I would love to ask you a flip question here that's on, on the fly here. Three, three favorite softwares for schools that come to mind. I know you weren't prepared for that one, so I get if there's no answer, but if there's three that come to mind, go, man, I love suggesting this one to a school or pitching this to a school. Yeah, I love this question because I, I love systems and I, I, I love change and I love the next widget or the next, you know, creative thinker who's going to come in and solve problem A, B or C. So I love, you know, playing in sandboxes and seeing what's a good idea, what's a good cultural fit or not. You know, that's the thing. Um, I, I don't think any anyone would, would advocate being reckless, but I, I, I you know, I do want to give the sense of change has arrived and I think embracing change is healthy if we do it in a wise and discerning way. So anyways, um, the first one I'll mention is a finance and accounting ERP. So anybody who's ever worked in finance or accounting or managed treasury, managed accounting workflow, been a controller, been a CFO, been an accounting manager would love, love this. And that's Sage Intact. A few years ago, Sage and Intact got married and became one company and created a really advanced cloud-based finance and accounting ERP that is especially good at handling nonprofit accounting, which for schools that, for any school, but you know, schools that fundraise, schools that have temporarily restricted funds or, or different grant sources, they can do that tactical daily work very well in Sage Intact. Uh, the second one, is a is a human capital uh, software that I encourage schools to check out, and it's not unique to schools, but it but in in my experience, I've I've only seen it used in schools, and I've seen it used very well, and that's called Nectar. Nectar is a cloud based recognition platform that schools schools or any organization can use to provide recognition to employees who live out the values of the organization, who embody you know the mission of the school. And it's, it's, it's unique and different because it not only allows managers to recognize direct reports and team members, but it allows and facilitates peer-to-peer -peer recognition. So I would encourage anyone to check that out. It's a real culture enhancer to allow your, your faculty and staff to be more united and more supportive in a real practical way with a tool like Nectar. And the last one I would highlight is called uh, Forte. Forte is a real innovative service. And what they do is they provide not counseling and not life coaching, but more of a holistic and conversational processing. And anyone who joins Forte gets to use a guide and that guide can be swapped out if it's not a good fit. But if it is a good fit, users of Forte will stay connected with their guide through messages and FaceTime and uh, phone calls and get professional encouragement, personal encouragement, and the like. And it's a really, especially in the last three, four years when uh, mental health needs have risen to the surface and been exposed, and, and there ha it seems like there hasn't been enough supply to meet that demand, Forte is a, a great tool that can allow employees of a school and those in a school community to really have that pressure release to, to be you know seen and heard and known in a confidential way as much or as little as they would like to. So those are three really unique ones that hopefully listeners might find interesting. Sweet, and I never heard of either of them, so that helps me. So I'm hoping, well, maybe not hoping, but hope, 
hoping those will, I'm just thinking people like have never heard of them before. So hopefully some of you guys have heard of those before, but if not, check out those three. I love, I love that flip question. You handled that beautifully. So I like to segue into the, my, my final question, which is almost a piggyback on probably what I just asked you, but piece of advice, like this could be typically asked for one, but if there's a couple that come to mind on just the financial world for schools that are, that are listening, maybe, maybe their financial stuff is really unclear right now for them, or there would just be a nice little tip that you typically end up giving schools? Is there something that comes to mind a couple, if it needs to be for the, the financial health of a piece of advice for the school leaders listening? Yeah. <clears throat> My first one is just, you know, uh, get, get out with it and, and get it out there. If you have questions, if you have needs, my encouragement is that there are so many solutions now. There are so many solutions. There are so many resources. And so there doesn't need to be any sense of or we don't know what's going on or we're behind with these deliverables. And so we're going to conceal or we're going to delay or we're going to distract. My encouragement is to to come, you know, come forward and really seek out and leverage the solutions. And there's people who would love to help you to do that and leverage those solutions to, to either increase your skill set, increase your knowledge, increase the performance of your team, whatever the case might be. And embedded in that, I think my encouragement is to just shed fear. You know, I think we've got to be willing to try new things. We have to be willing even sometimes to fail forward. Again, not recklessly, but we've got to be um, strategic and we've got to be open. We've got to be open to fail forward and to embrace change, you know, just like our students do who are in the classroom that we're demanding they acquire new content or they demonstrate new and deeper understandings through assessments and other projects and other work deliverables. We have to do that, too, as the adults that are in these school communities. We've got to be open. We've got to try new things. Um, so I, that's that's my biggest, I think, encouragement is knowing that there's such a collection and a, a you know a big mass of resources out there be open to failing forward be open to trying new things typically teachers don't like change and so you know that's th that that's why i lead with this as my encouragement that that there are so many things that could help you so many things that could help your school um advance and don't miss out that's my encouragement don't miss out the other thing that I think has to be said when we're talking about schools is, hey, you, my encouragement is you've got to build into that community. And so stick together, be a community, be a people, you know, give the gift of community to others. And when others offer you community, my advice is to receive it, you know, graciously and gratefully and, you know, be that, be that tribe, be that people, be that community for each other. I think it's so true, whatever uh, the saying is about, you know, going farther together than alone. I think that's so true in schools. Parents have a unique role to play. School leaders have a unique role to play. Coaches do, students do, counselors do, uh, all of it. And so, you know, don't miss that. I, I would say leverage every relationship that you can for the good in your school community and really, really do stick together. Love it. Matt, if people want to get in contact with you, what's one of the best ways they can do that? Yeah, well, my team has a site and I'd encourage them to go there. We're on social media as well. So you can look look for us on social media. Our name is School Finance Help. And the best way, if you just want to cut to the chase, is go to schoolfinancehelp.com. Ping one of our team members and we'll respond right away. We love to serve schools. That's that's our passion. That's our, our heartbeat. So schoolfinancehelp.com. Connect with us today. We'll do anything we can to help your school, big or small. Love it. Awesome. Well, Matt, thank you for taking time out of your day to hop on the podcast. I love what you're doing to help schools. And I'm hoping that I just continue to do that for many, many years to come as I'm pretty positive you will. So I wish you nothing but the best, man. Thanks for hopping on today. Yeah. Thank you so much. Take care. Thanks for having me. Well, another huge shout out and a thank you to Matt for taking time and being on the podcast today. I love what he's doing to be like this outsource or fractional CFO for schools, such a cool model. So if that's something your school's in need of, I encourage you to reach out to him and his team and get some help, have a consultation, but 
Again, just reach out to them if that's something that you guys need help on. And as always, I'm hoping today's episode, you were able to take at least one thing away from what he said that you can take back to your school to make it better than it is right now. And if you need some community in your life, I want you to join our private Facebook community just for school leaders called School Success Makers completely free. I'm personally in there. would love to see you in there as well. We also have some amazing resources on our website, schoolsuccessmakers.com. One of those is the school success report, which you guys can get weekly. You can see the button in the top right of our website. There's a button to click and be able to be on the list for that. We just need your, your name and email to be able to get on that list and get that weekly when it goes out. Some great articles, shout outs. We're going to do some giveaways, a lot of fun things planned for the school success report and want to make sure you guys don't miss out on that. If you guys have any comments, suggestions, ideas, you can message us through our website with any of those. If there's somebody you want to see on the podcast or you think you would be a good guest on the podcast, please let us know those as well. We're, we're an open book. We always want to get better. And so we want to make sure you guys are loving this content. And if you are, please, if you haven't yet, give us a five-star review, share it with your friends on social, give us a tag so that we know that you're out there listening and sharing all the material that we're putting out. We appreciate you guys. Love that you're pouring into these students. Keep doing what you're doing. And we'll be back here next week with another amazing guest as usual on the School Success Podcast. We'll see you then.